Okay, start of an engine replacement video. Just uh, I want to have a look at all the wiring to be able to remember how all the spaghetti goes because it's a bit of a spaghetti situation. So we're just going to have to refer back to this video to see what's what, who's who in the zoo. Oh, that's a bit of spaghetti. Who knows what goes where? You know, we'll just work with it. What about this side? Yeah, well, this one will be a bit more straightforward. Should be right. This one will be good. That's one piece. That's that. That one come up there. Get across there like that. Put it back how it was, because of course this is not how we would wire up a vehicle. No way would I have all that. <laughs> That'd do my head in change in the air filter. All right, let's get on with this job. The way this battery is, I can't even split the wires apart to get these the battery out. So we've got to pull more stuff apart. But anyway, that's what we do. Just letting you know, more work created by aftermarket, you know, not satisfactory kind of setup, if you know what I mean. The MCC bull bar, we can't actually access the front to get to the radiator mount, because we've got to get the radiator out to change the engine, right? Radiator out. So that means we've got to somehow, so we've got to pull this trim off, yeah? Is that all we can do, really? Pull, pull this trim? trim just trim out the wires. Oh, yeah, okay. And then there's wires through the trim, so we can't even get the trim away from the car. The, so people go under or over around your trim, not through the middle, anyway. Um, certainly not quite standard. Is this a have a whinge engine replacement video? I think so. This is uh, just blown up again. What was wrong with the first one? Dropped and it, uh, Dropped it wasn't, okay. wasn't working. Okay, so it didn't, the first one didn't fail. So this no. is, what, one year old? I can smell yeah. it, mate. It's cooked. It doesn't get that much treatment, does it? I mean, it gets used, but... No. Wow. All right, so this uh, engine has had a bit of progress. Um, most things, this looks fairly disconnected. I don't know if you look down there. There's nothing connected around the front. It's got a fairly clear line down the side. Looks all right to me. There was a drop of coolant sitting there. Because this one had the problem with the EJR cooler previously and it got cooked. So for the people going, oh, we're going to crack the piston again. Well, you got to understand it had a coolant leak, no coolant left, and the coolant temp got up to 120 something, 125 degrees. So do you reckon that might be a contributor, people? Anyway, these things happen sometimes, but there was a problem internally in the EJR cooler, very rare. Um, but he's actually plumbed it all up and double checked to make sure and definitely had an internal leak. So something we've got to keep a, a, a lookout for. And this is something I've previously discussed that if you haven't got much EGR flow or no EGR flow, <clears throat> now might be a good time to consider something like, okay, so at the moment you've got coolant flowing through the EGR cooler. So in here, that's how it's supposed to cool. You've got exhaust gases going through it. 300, 400, 500, 600 degrees, whatever, hot stuff. And the coolant is about, you know, 80 to 90 degrees in these hoses, and it's flowing through in a separate system, and this is where the problem is. If there's any perforation, any leaks internally, then this coolant gets into the air system of the EGR cooler into the intake up there, right? So that's that can be a problem so if i'm just going to say if you were to um bypass the cooler you can see this is one end of the cooler the other end of the cooler is there if the hoses that went to the cooler for example if there was a hose that went from here directly down to that one down there and to be honest i've got to think about this do they even need to flow for the cooling system maybe they can get capped off so let us know in the comments have you bypassed the ejr cooler because if you've got a if you've closed your ejr valve you're crazy if you haven't, um, you know. I mean, the, the the simple way to demonstrate for you would be take that hose off there, take that hose off there, and join them together, right? Officially making one hose from there to there. If it was me, I'm not too sure if anything needs to flow that way. I don't think it does. You could probably cap it off here and cap it off there, but I'm not going to be the, the guy using common sense for 10 seconds thinking, yeah, that should be right, mate, and tell you to do that. I need to think about it a bit more, and I probably even need to do it and I'm seriously considering doing it on my vehicle. Now, as we know, a lot of people have already got a reduced EGR flow with a plate with a seven mil hole, you know, down behind here, which means that there's not many e exhaust gases to cool down, if you like. And after all, they did want hot exhaust gases, didn't they? So by having less flow and hotter gases, then that's probably what you want, you know? But I, I really don't know if the heat from the, you know, that, just think of it this way, right? Because it's obviously there to cool down the exhaust gases, but 
if you take the coolant out of the system, and that's just air, right? Say it's air, and say you can cap these off. It's not going to matter because nothing's going to go in there. It's just where the coolant goes. But say you cap that off and cap that off. With no coolant in there, is the heat of the exhaust flow going in there going to actually damage the cooler somehow? And, I mean, what could actually happen? But these are the things we've got to think about. These are things we've seen. Vehicles with tunes, vehicles with EJRs shut off. We've seen, like, a lot of really bad... It's the tune end of it, I believe. Really badly corroded. See how that's nice and flat there? I mean, it needs a clean, but see how it's nice and flat? Vehicles with tunes, they are severely badly eroded away. I don't know if it's the tune or the closed EJR, because with the EJR closed, you're sort of pushing the heat into it, but it's not flowing. You know the cooling effect. Something's got to be flowing. The hot air has got to be taken away. It's got to keep flowing. So I'm not sure if we were to get rid of the coolant in here, if it would adversely affect the cooler here and you know end up you know we don't need the cooler there to be quite honest you know what i mean it's just a bad idea but a lot of people remove coolers and put plates and it's they've had problems later which is why we recommend leaving it there for the moment there's only been one of these that i know of i'm sure there's going to be people say oh yeah but the thing is i'm talking about on 1kd ftvs not other makes and models it happens on other cars all the time we've got the good ones here you know, these quality components made by T-RAD, you can see there. Okay, there's the part number in case anybody's interested in seeing what they're worth. They're nearly a thousand bucks. I think they're about eight hundred, seven, eight, nine hundred, depends, you know, what price you get on the day. If someone's ordered one in and never picked it up, then the dealer might want to sell it. They might give you a, a cheaper price. But at the moment, the normal price when you order one in, as far as I know, it's close to about nine hundred bucks. Might be different between the Prada and the Hilux and prices change up, down, left, right, whatever's gonna happen. But it's something to seriously consider, can we get away with? So who wants to be the guinea pig? Put it in the comments. Let me know if you're going to not risk your engine coolant getting into it. So you're going to run a hose that goes from there straight down or just join those two hoses right there with a little brass joiner and a couple of clamps, you know. Buy a couple of these Toyota clamps, would you? And just get a flat piece of pipe with a little ridge on it or a brass joiner. And just let a couple of these clamps go where you've cut the hoses here and just put a joiner and put another one of those clamps to clamp it all in position make it all nice and neat like factory put a couple of rubber caps over these if you like you know those chairs you know what you put on the bottom of the stool you buy them in bunnings i reckon what size would you need about 15 mil something like that smaller size 15 mil something like that anyway because i'd love for people to try that out and let us know and then obviously after 20,000 Ks, you might need to have a look at the cooler, take it off, see if there's any, you know, any damage because people need to know. And look, we might get around to it, but just get that, get that compressor off, couple more bolts and this engine's coming out anyway. So I just thought I'd show you around a little bit. Because right. people like to look see, don't they? They like to look and see what's going on. So all the inlet side and all the timing belt and all the pumps and everything comes off, you know, the crank, the tensioners, the compressor, everything like this, it all comes off, you know, all everything else now, pretty much what you're looking at, um, more or less, is going to come off. I mean, you can take the alternator off now, you can take this, you can, people can do that if you like, it doesn't matter. I mean, obviously, you've got less weight on your engine stand if you do so. But for us, we just get it out and swap everything over then, you know, remove, clean, refit. There's a lot of optional extras, you know, there's things you can reuse, like your timing belt, your idler and attention and what's in behind there. The bearings and the pulleys, you can change or you can read. The drive belt, you can reuse it or you can put a new one. Um, the glow plugs, you can change it or you can put a new one. There's lots of things, right? I could just keep going on. But um, yeah, anyway, we're just about to lift this engine out. So maybe we'll get it out and we'll have a bit of a look around and we'll wrap this one up. All right, mate, what's going on? You got this engine out yet? It looks a bit looks a bit wobbly. What's going on with that engine, mate? It looks like it's uh, flopping around a little bit there. You know, is it coming out yet or what? It looks pretty loose. Mate, you got this engine out yet or what, man? You know, it looks pretty loose. It's just hanging in there. Yeah, it's time to get it out, mate. Let's get this thing out of here. Nice and slow, double checking there's no wires, anything still connected, just in case. That's it, mate. Keep going. I'm on this end, you're there, and beautiful. Let's get it round onto that stand. Beautiful. All right, mate, get that flywheel off so we can get that thing on this engine stand. Let's get this thing on the stand, baby. All right, get in there, mate. I want to get that torque converter, make sure it's all pushed in properly so we don't have any issues on reassembly. Thank you. And I'll drop the jack while you put the stand in place after that. Give it a good push and a turn. Bit of rust on that one, not too bad though. 
No, it's lost me. Beautiful. Okay, let's get that stand. And I'll get my, you know what, camera down, people. I've got to drop the jack carefully. All right, Fred Flintstone, get out of there. That's how it goes, people. Just put the stand there to uh, support the transmission, to back up the jack. Now, the other tight one is this one, the uh, 22 mil on the crankshaft. I think the torque, what's this? Three, was it 325 or 365 newton meters? Do you remember? Something like that anyway. It's F tight, very, very F tight. 300 and something. It doesn't matter as long as it's F tight. And for that... Got the Roby big gun, but it's undoing torque. It says quite 1,600 newton metres, but as far as I know, that's tightening. So I think loosening is 1,000 newton metres. And so far, we've given it a bit of a go, and it hasn't cracked it, so it shows how tight it is. This is the $450 gun, okay? Um, we could probably put a 5AH battery on it, but a 4 is pretty close. And this is a pretty fresh battery. I think it's only, see, 2022. So it's got a heap of charge as far as I know. We can check that one as well. Press that button, yeah, it's full. Happy days. So we sprayed a bit of CRC. We're just letting it soak and we'll crack it again. So one of the most important options that comes not with a new engine, you get a hole, not a glow plug, is these glow plugs here. Do you want the old ones out of your old engine? But there's probably nothing wrong with it. Or do you want to spend another couple hundred bucks and put new ones in? I think I know the answer. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, here we are. So obviously new engine doesn't come with new glow plugs. So it's definitely an option to put in your old ones. We don't see any problems with old glow plugs. Certainly if they're 10 or 15 years old, I'd be putting new ones in. But of course you can save a couple hundred bucks or putting the old ones in because we don't see any issues with them. The issue is don't take them out because when you go to take them out, quite often alloy of the head comes out stuck on the glow plugs, right? So. We could still have trouble getting the glow plugs out and need to clean them up and whatever, which costs you a bit extra in labour, you know, and you still get old glow plugs. So obviously it would be wise to put new ones in, but you don't have to. So just want to be clear as possible with that information. Anyway, we'll wrap this video up. That's what a new engine looks like and uh, it's going to be in the vehicle this soon. what an old one looks like and we've got to swap all these components over still before we can put the new engine into the vehicle. If you like or learn something from the video, maybe just hit the like button and if you want to subscribe so you don't miss the next one you know the subscribing you turn the bell on then you get notified when there's another video one video per day keep yourself educated with the right information thanks for watching people see ya